Uh, we are cohort nine, and this week we are gonna look into the into chapter seven, environment. So after I I read the the chapter from the book, I was like, oh, I mean, this is a nice chapter full of theory, not that many uh, exercises. And I was like, oh, I'm sure our friends from previous cohorts will have some nice nice uh nice slides for us to use and i check and this is what we have these are nice to have but not absolutely necessary and then slide one add slides <laughs> okay so i was like okay so i guess i'm gonna i'm gonna have to actually do the slides so i haven't submitted my my pull request uh, because I wanted to show you this, but uh, now we're gonna have some some slides for for this for this chapter. Okay, so as the as the previous cohort said, uh, understanding environments is not actually necessary for a day to day use of R, but they are important and they're really interesting. I don't know if you if you if you got that from from reading the the chapter. It makes it makes us understand how the how how the language is implemented and how how packages and how how everything works in inside. So I thought it was it was really interesting. Uh, we're gonna learn how environments are used and uh, how environments are used to implement the scoping. That's the that's the important part. And we're gonna learn about uh, important and special environments. And we're also gonna learn about the super assignment. Okay, so the, the basics. So environments are the data structure that powers scoping. So it's where R goes to, to look for objects. Something that we didn't have time to, to check uh, last, last week was the four rules about scoping. Mm, I hope everyone knows what is scoping. What 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 we're what are what are we talking about when when, when I say scoping? The scoping is what is the scoping? <laughs> the scoping, the scoping is like the 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 sections where our variables are gonna live, where our objects are are gonna live. So we have uh four four rules for lexical lexical scoping. One is name masking. Uh, that means that means that a new a new name uh, masks the uh, the the name of an object created before, uh, if I'm correct. Then function versus variables. That means that if we're looking for a function, R is gonna try to if if we're looking for a function name. R is gonna look only in the objects that were created as functions to look for that name. So it's gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna uh, look at at uh, vectors or or anything. That's why if we use C, the C like the combined function as a name for a vector, it is not gonna clash with the with the C function. We still shouldn't do it, but but um, it's not gonna be a problem. Uh, a fresh start that means that uh, we have new variables inside the function every time we call a function. So the, the environment is is new every time we we call a, a function and dynamic lookup. I don't remember what that. Is, but I'm sorry, I I I do have my my notes about this, but I if someone remembers. Uh, yeah, well, dynamic scoping is more like depending on uh what's the current state when the program is running, I think. But okay. I'm not a computer science guy, so if anyone wants, but we can check that later. Uh, <laughs> looking at the notes or like oh. the, the thing from last week, it's that I think that's right. It's, it has to do with like when it just dynamically, yeah, it does it does update starts itself, yes. Yes, yes, sorry, yes, yes, uh, yes. R looks for, for values when the fun function is run, non, not when it is created. So that's where, where we actually get the, the values for 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 uh or variables. Mm, okay. So that's that's uh scoping and, and that's 
all of those rules are we can we can use it and they exist thanks to environment. Okay, so environments look like a list, but they have four important differences. Every name must be unique. Uh, the names are not ordered. They all have a parent and they're not copied when, when they're modified. So what do they actually do? They bind a set of names with a set of values and they can even uh, bind themselves. So it's not gonna be common that we have to create an environment, but we can do it uh, if we want to. And for that, we can just use. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a new, um, a new environment right here. Like we only have have to use the function env, and we can add uh, the the names of the variables of object that we want to use and their values. Mm -hmm. So that's 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 an environment. And when we print the value or 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 the name of our environment, what we get it's uh just an address uh, on, on memory. So it's actually not that very helpful to, to print them, but yeah, we, we can create. Okay, so there are some uh, important environments. One is the current environment and that's the environment in, in which our code is currently executed. We can print it with current env and, and access it with environment, with the function environment. And we also have the global environment, and that's where all of the, the interactive co computation takes place. It's also called the workspace, and we can print it with global M and access it with global M. So if we just um, print print this, current M, unless we're doing, unless we're working on a function or we're creating a package or, or something else, I think, most of it will be almost always on, on the global environment. We'll have the global environment as our current environment and as our global, global, global. So yeah, but if we if we do this, so we have the current environment and uh, art gives, gives it the, the, the name R uh, global imp or dot global imp. And if we're inside a function, so we're in, in that case, we're gonna be in the in the and inside the function, so it actually give us give us the address. Mm. Okay. So as I said before, every every environment has a parent. So, and and their parent is another environment, and that's that makes kind of a a, a chain of environments. So that if R doesn't find an object or or the, the value of an object or the value of a variable in one environment is gonna look on its parent. Uh, yes. And we can get the the entire like change of chain of uh, environments and parent environments if we print uh m if we use this function. So in this case I'm using uh the function m underscore parents to print all of the parents from uh, current M. If we do it by, well, it said in the, in the, in the book that if, that this, this list will stop in the global end and that if you wanted to go all the way to the empty environment, you will have to put uh, like as an argument as the final, but uh, it actually, it printed it like here. So we can see that uh, we have our current M, and then because I imported the package glue and the package rlang, they are here. They actually become parents of my current environment. Okay, so every every package that I import, it's gonna become a parent of the current environment, and and that's kind of important. And after that, we have uh, the the packages that are that are loaded by by default. 
and until we, we get to auto logs and and the the uh, base package the only environment that doesn't have a parent is the empty environment that's kind of the parent of of the all. so yeah if we if we use the uh, function parent dot m and we call it with uh, the empty m we're gonna see that the we, we're gonna get an error mm. Steffi says that in Paris it's tough if you use a created environment. Okay, we can we can use it. Uh, if we can use it in the one that I just created. So if we use in parents, in parents for e one, it just has the okay. It just has the the global. And if we ask for the help i think the argument it's called last okay. so that way we actually get the entire list of uh of packages that are that that, that were imported and we go all the way to the to the empty bear my guess is that because it goes up to the current environment will go up to global. Maybe if you're going up to the global, it'll do everything. Anyway, it probably doesn't matter. Yeah, I have I've, I have no idea. I also thought that uh, I I thought that it might have something to do with the with with working in a notebook. Like I I don't know if that changes. No, I tried it locally too because immediately I was like, oh, is that really like I I'm pretty sure it didn't do that for me. And then I realized because I've been working on a created environment, so even okay. in just regular R session, I had the same behavior. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if someone has a question or a comment on up to here. Okay. Like the I have not like the. Um... I don't know, current env like print stuff a bit differently. So I'm a bit lost by the presentation of it versus the best R version. But outside of it, I think the order looks fine. Like you can have it also like I'm going to pass some code also like um, that's do nearly the same, but that's from deep R. It's from here and you can do a, it will produce nearly the same stuff. It's a while loop that's check the current stuff. Uh, okay. Is, is uh -huh. from here. Oops. Yeah. Anyway, it, it just loop. I mean, it's a loop. It's a repeat loop, and okay. it just prints stuff like uh, until uh, it go to the empty environment. Okay. Mm. And and current yes. env is quite easier, no? Yes. I think we can agree on that. <laughs> yes, the the ones yes the the function that uh, have the mm -hmm. underscore they come from from uh Arlang and oh, like, like this one is from base part yeah. of is is from base and this one gives you the parent like the 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 the, yeah, the, the uh, the immediate, but... yes, immediate, the, the, the immediate part of, of the current environment uh, and the other one lists all the parents uh, through, through the empty one. Yeah, and that's why like you need to uh, go a loop to yes. go like... Uh... Yeah. I mean, oh, some recursion, oh, oh. yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. In in the book, they they also uh, they talk about like a recursion function to 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 actually look for 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 that. Mm, okay, so yeah, we have to remember that uh, every environment has a parent environment. And uh, in like in 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 that sense, we also have to talk about the the super assignment. We've been using, I mean, we've been using the, the assignment operator like for for everything. And what it does is that it creates a variable in the current environment, but the super assi assignment that has the two um, less than symbols instead of one, that one modifies an existing, an existing variable in the parent environment or 
creates a new one in the global environment. So I put uh, an example here. If we create an object with the assignment assignment operator, and then we use a function that assigns also the, the variable with the same name, this variable is going to be a variable that that holds that value only inside this function. But if we use the super assignment, then we're going to change the value of the variable that was created in the global environment. And if we use some other uh, variables named, in this case, like B, that variable doesn't exist in the global environment. So it's going to be created in the global, although it was uh, the, 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 the assignment was done inside the function. So we can just like print the, the values of the variables like, like we always do, but we, we can also use some, um, the fact that, they, that the environments uh, are similar to a list and we can use the the dollar sign uh, operation to access one of the variables values or the double bracket just like a list and Arlang also has some functions to get the values of of a, a variable uh, of of a variable inside an environment we can use mget and we tell it the the environment where we want to find the value of a variable, and we can also check if an environment has has uh, this binding. In this case, we don't uh, we don't have a variable named C, but we do have the the B, and the double bracket with the number that kind of like accessing uh, the the element of uh, of an environment. That one will not work because we have to remember that the objects or, or the elements inside the environment have no order so that that wouldn't make sense yep. so we had we we already talked about uh some important em environments and we're gonna talk now about the special environments uh so we have we have uh, some some environments that, that are mm. Oliver said uh, I do not understand what using random ordinary speed of the tree oh then <laughs> yeah I, like this is like apparently it's a good property of environment like this is not stored in particular order so it's facilitate when you search the namespace. Yeah. But I do not understand why. I just like read it okay. and said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no worry. No, no need to spend time on that. Okay. Uh yeah, so we have some special environments. Um one of them are the package environments. So as I said before, every package that it's th that we attach through the function uh, library or or require, they become the parent of global M. And they become the parent in order. So the last one that we attach is going to be the first parent of the global N. We can see that uh, if, like we, like we already saw, if I look for the parents of my current environment, and we said that the last we wanted to be the empty hmm. and the empty sorry uh we have the the packages that that uh that i imported and if i import another one let's import this one i'm sorry mm -hmm. Not Python. <laughs> uh, we if if we import a deployer with with library, then we that one becomes the first parent of my current environment. 
and all of the packages that that we have imported that they're all the the parts of my current environment they all form the search path and we can we can get their names we can get the list of the of the packages that that we have as part in the for global with the function search and if we do that no matter which packages we have uh, imported, we're gonna see that we have two packages at the end, autoloads and the uh, the environment of the of the base package. Autoloads, what it does, it it helps us load package objects like datasets, but only when when they're needed. Mm, we I think we've all used. Uh, a data set like like iris or like the palmer penguins uh that that exist in our they exist in our environment but they are not loaded until we actually we actually call for them so that's done uh by auto loads and then the the, the base pack package is the base package mm. Yes, exactly. This also helps helps understanding some some name name conflicts uh and because of, of the order or of how the 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 packages are important. Mm, okay, so those are our package environments. We're gonna uh, return to them in, in a minute. We also have function environments, and this one was uh, a bit a bit tricky to, to understand. Mm, so function environments are the environment where where a function is created. It's not the environment where it's not the environment where the function is executed. It's the environment where the function is created, and this one is bound by the function. So in R, functions are also called closures because they capture or, or they enclose the environment uh, where they were created. And I have like two examples here. One is this, I created a function in the global environment. And if I use this, this uh, fn um, underscore m function from the Arlang uh, package to get the function environment of a function, <laughs> Uh, we can see that the function environment of this function is the the global M. Okay, and we can also see that the global M has a binding for that name. So the function, the global M is bound by the function, and the global M has a binding for that function. This one, this one, sorry, this one is actually kind of a uh, kind of a tr tricky one. So yes, we can find that that name in the global name, uh, M. Mm. And then if we if we create an environment using the function M, and we bind a name for a function inside that environment, the function environment, it's still gonna be the global M because this function was created in the global M, but the global M doesn't have a binding for this function because this function belongs to the environment E that I just created. So if we check the uh the name if yes if, if we check uh if the the name or or the binding exists in the global m we get false but it exists in the e m okay mm, i'm gonna check the chat okay joe ask um but what we're showing so the 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 functional environments is where the function lives uh it's it's not where the function lives, it's where the function was created. Because in this case, this function lives in the EM, 
but it was created in the global end. And this one, this one was created in the global end and it also lives in the global end. So we have, yeah, we can say that we have three important environments uh, that are associated with a function. The environment where the function was created, the environment where the function lives, and that's going to be the environment that has a binding for that for for the function name, and then the environment where the function is ex executed, and that one is well, the, the the environment that the environment that the function is executed, but the, the one that it's inside the function. And that one is created every time because we also have the color and that's that's another one that, that will be the fourth one. Uh, and that's the environment that calls the function. Mm, yes. Yes, it's, it's like Steffi said, where it lives, where it looks for variables and uh, its environment when it runs. I think I was a little yes. ambiguous on that one because I was thinking about the internal uh, executable environment, but I know like there's a lot of different ways of thinking about it. Yes. Um, well, <laughs> the, the yeah. thing is the function can look for variables inside its execution environment, uh, Joe. And then if you've created a function in the global environment and you say use the variable A and there is no variable A within your function, it will then start looking for that variable A in the next, environment where it was created i think so there you know so that that's where that lex lex uh, lex something scoping comes in that's that's actually yeah i i didn't thought about about that where will it where will it uh where will the function look for variables if it doesn't if it doesn't find it uh inside its own environment in the environment in the in its function environment or in the environment where it belongs i know that it makes a it's it's i mean that that's the different that the difference but uh i don't know what which environment will go First. The quote I was looking at and the one I put in there, I found like was the really helpful one for me, although you do have to think about it a couple, at least I had to think about it a couple of times, was that idea that the distinction between binding and being bound by is subtle, but important. The difference is how we find G, the function, versus how G finds its variable. So if we follow that sentence through, I was thinking that binding G, where the, the environment that binds G is where is the environment where we find G. Yes. Whereas the environment bound by G is the environment that G will go to next okay. to find variables if it doesn't find it inside. That was my interpretation. But I had to like, I had to walk it through step by step in my head. So that mm -hmm. that's how I interpret it. Does that seem to make? I, I think it's good interpretation, but like maybe what's difficult is let's say G is a function, but G is calling, let's say, X, Y, and X, Y are also binded in some way. Yes, and then I think, so I, then I think you have to jump to that function and say, well, where yeah. is that one bound? Uh, or being, yeah, where is that one? Anyway, you have to look at its bindings and then kind of go from there. We, we can try to create an example if you, if, if you want to. Uh would be difficult but we can try sure yeah, we, can, yeah we, we can try uh and it's yeah so the uh, i tried to make the the content as as uh succinct as, as possible but yeah we can try to make an example okay so um okay i'm gonna create an environment so e one it's gonna be my m and this one will have some variables. And then, uh, and we can we can create a function in E1.
we can try to return one of the variables that live in the environment that yes that live in in e1 mm, print say, maybe i'll just do yeah okay so if we have okay and i'm gonna create another g in the global m so we're gonna have uh, so so if we get fun m what was the fn fn m for this function, so like it's so this function binds the global environment, right? But yeah. lives in E1. Okay. And if we call it, let's see. It returns the value of the variable in the global M and not the value that... Right, but you had to call it from the environment. You couldn't just say function in E1. Yeah. You had to say E1 dollar sign function in E1. Yes. So you had to call it. So that's like, that's what we're getting at with that difference. That was a really good example. Okay. Essentially we had to go into that environment to use the function, but it was bound to the global environment. And so it used the global environment variable. And if and, I print a here, do you think that the that the function will? I don't think so, don't but you can try. One okay. My guess is that it would because that would require it going down as opposed to up. That yeah, that would require like, yes, like going in in oh. the same in the same level, yeah. right? Because the, these two variables live in this. Well, the, the function and a live in the same uh, environment. So, yeah. Okay. And it's Joe. Sorry, and Joe had a really good point in the chat because we were talking about how, you know, I, I was always thinking that like package functions are like special because they're in the package environment. Um, and so they won't go up and use variables from your, the, you know, no package function will use a variable from your global environment. And then Joe pointed out that, well, that's because um, the functions in a package don't have the global environment as their parent. Right. They're actually the parents of the global environment. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that made so much more sense for me, for me. So I just I wanted to kind of bring that out because I thought it, it was it kind of kind of really I know that, but it's I didn't realize that. And so when uh, Joe pointed that out, it made it it made a big click for me. Joe also asked if you could copy and paste the code. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. And if you want, you can just uh, add an argument to your function. OK. Let's for example and call it let's say um and you can like add the argument will be like x equal let's say uh, by default g or whatever or a okay yeah and then it's you starting can to get really and then yeah. you can specify e1 of a and it should work e e e1 um and uh, specify the a from e1 if you rerun your function now it will not work normally. But you can now specify where it forms. Uh, oh, like remember, uh, just change print uh, a to print the x. Oh, in yes. the okay. Function call, yeah. Okay. And then now, when you call e1 function in ey, you can specify x being e um, e1 dollar sign a should work or even g whatever you want. No, you can specify it. I don't mm -hmm. think it's out, but. Yeah, just go for it. Function for no, just yeah, this. Yeah, put oh, sorry, that into the your call. Yeah. Like this one. Yeah. Like, okay. Sorry, my English. No, yeah, no, not no, me. no, no, sorry, sorry. I was like it's it's already a lot going on. <laughs> just yeah. I will type it A1 8 uh okay. eight, for example. Like, like here. Oh, oh, G. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So. And now you will you know the address. You on line A. You want uh, A? Yeah. yeah. Go oh, for yeah. it. Okay. And now you put that into your call, your function call, yeah. your argument. 
No, just just uh, on line uh, 15, 14. Instead of eight, do E1 dollar sign. Yeah, that's E1 or, dollar or, sign. Or, or, or both bad English. Yeah. OK. If you can go to line 14. Line 14. And replace the eight. Uh-huh. With E1 dollar sign A. Oh, yep. OK, 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 I get you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no worries. No, no, no. It was a great example. OK. Verbalizing code is not straightforward. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and I then... think that has to do with if you had A in this environment, if we had A in the global environment, that function would work and would return the A from the global environment, the one you got written, because it's it's being created with bindings to the global environment or is bound by, I'm not sure which way direction we're going, but in my head, it makes sense. And so it's going to use the A from the global environment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it can search in the environment of the on I wonder if it's E1. possible to create the function inside the E1, like create it inside the, I don't know how to do that. But we, we don't have to go there, but I wonder if you could create it inside the E1 and then say X equals A or X is assigned to A and then it would use the internal A, but like, I feel like there's probably a way to do that, but this is clearly using creating the function in the global environment and then dropping it into that E1 environment. That's how I think of that line I, eight, yeah. line 11. It's like creating a function in the global environment and then assigning it inside that right. other environment. Yeah. And so I was wondering if there's a way that we could, working inside the environment, create that function and then it would work kind of, anyway, that's, it's, it's probably, I if think we, one example that we will see it. is when we see function factories. I think function ah, factories okay, do that. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm happy to wait for that. Let's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna paste. Great example, by the way. Yeah, it was really cool. When you were like, "Well, let's try this out," I was like, "Well, are you sure?" Like, I don't know about that. That was really cool, though. Nice. Yes. Yes. I, I think I think it it's clearer now. Mm, okay. So yes, this matter because it changes the way functions find their variables as as we just uh saw. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna switch to namespaces. That's another uh another special environment. So what what we said before. If the parent environment of a package varies, ba varies based on what other packages have been loaded, does that mean that the package will find different functions if packages are loaded in a different order? And no, the, the book said no, and that's thanks to namespaces. So it doesn't matter how we, I mean, it, it matters, there, I think that there, there are two things. So for us, it matters the order that we uh, import our 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 packages, as Oliver said, uh, with the with the whole uh, name masking of the functions. But for the package itself, it doesn't matter because it's kind of like enclosed in its in its own namespace. Yes, exactly. It matters for us, but not uh, for the package namespace. So every function that it's inside uh, the, a, a package is associated with two environments, the package environment and the namespace. The package environment are, are the ones that, that we, uh, we already saw are, are these ones. And they are the external interface. They dictate how how we find the, the functions inside a package, but the namespaces they are they are more related with the internal implementations, and the namespace controls how the function finds its own variables. And every namespace has two ancestors. One is the imports environment, and this one is controlled by, by the package developer in the namespace file. And I remember I had, okay, if, if we look 
for for any uh, package in 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 GitHub, such as uh, the the Dev Tools package, they all have this file that it's called namespace, and they list all of the. I'm not a package developer, so I I I'm guessing that the export means the functions that the package is exporting. Okay. The functions that the usually functions that the package is creating and then exporting, okay. and those are the external sure. facing. Okay. Ones. So yes. Okay. So so thank you, thank you, Stevie. So those will be the functions that we as a package user we're gonna find, and uh, but it also has imports, and those are the packages or functions that this package needs. For its uh, own internal implementation, and and yes, so that means that we're not gonna be able to to see internal variables that that the that the function works with because it's part of its namespace. It's not part of the package environment. And one more little thing here, just to yeah. kind of uh, clarify that you that namespace is also showing functions that are imported direct, the functions are imported from other packages that they're pulling into the namespace so they can reference them just by the function name. A lot of packages will also not import those functions like that. And they'll just say like dplyr our colon colon, you know, mutate okay. instead. And so if you don't want to use dplyr our colon colon mutate in your function, you need to do that import from, and then you just say mutate. And that's how you put that mutate name in the yes. namespace so that you can grab it right away. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to find it. Okay. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. I don't know if that matters, but it, it, it seemed a little interesting to me because it, it kind of explained why you have to put it in the namespace. Otherwise, you can't use it without being explicit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Zephy. And okay, and it also has the base namespace as an as an ancestor, so that the packages can use any base function. However, the and and like it's related to the to to what you said uh some like before Steffi, like if we the 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 book said it's the base namespace, but it's a little bit different. So it says, uh, I'm gonna look for it here. It's something about like, they don't have to reference, they always load all the, the base functions, but don't put them in the namespace so that you don't have to see them. <laughs> something like that? No, it says that uh, the parent, right. The parent of the import is the base namespace, and it contains the same base environment, but it has a different parent. This one has the global environment as a parent. So you said before that that packages don't have that that packages are parent of the global, but they also have global as their parent. Because it's the, the pattern of their base, uh, of the of their base environment, but I'm not sure how how how. I think that means that when you're writing a package, you can use a base function without importing it in the namespace and without saying base colon colon function name. It just knows to go find it in the global environment, and that's I think what that's getting at, so that you don't have to explicitly import them. And nor do you have to explicitly state where they're coming from. Is yes, that yes, that? that but but that base namespace has global as its parent. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's kind of yes. Yeah, that goes into a circle. Yeah, yeah. It goes into a circle because then the the packages are parents of the global M. That's different. Also... That's the namespace, not the package environment, right? Oh, okay. It's, yes. Like the that's my brain starts getting a little fizzy because there's the package environment and then there's a namespace environment, right? They're not the same thing. Yes. Is that right? They're not, okay. they're not the, yes, they're not the same thing. Yeah. 
but I feel like I might need to do this chapter again at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that but that that relationship creates a very uh complicated <laughs> a very complicated set of of relationships inside the the. But yeah, yeah. So here, the packages is where we find a package. The package namespace is where we find the the functions, right? The package name and space is or the vice versa. The, no, the the package name and space is where we find the the functions. No, the package environment is where we find the functions, and the name and space is where the package finds its own variables. Yep. It's, okay. 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 I got it. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Apology. Okay. So yeah, that's that. <laughs> That was one that that was that was a, a tricky one. Uh then we also have the execution environment, and this one is created every time uh a function is is called, and this environment hosts the the function execution, and it's it lives only uh while the function is it's executing because it's garbage collected once the function has completed. And uh, this one is, is the one that, that the fresh start uh, principle relies on. Mm, the book has a, a really nice nice example for, for this one. Uh, is this. So this function says if the, if the current environment has an A, Sorry, if it doesn't ha has an A, we're gonna define it, and if it does, we're gonna just uh add one to to its value. But then we always get a one because the this variable this A needs to be created every time the function is called. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm, <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at reading the the notes too. So I hope this is this is clear. Uh, we're if we execute this code every time that we execute it, we're gonna uh we're gonna have a one because the value will never be be updated. Uh, because the the environment is gonna be a new one every time we call a function. Mm. And we finally have the the caller environment, and this environment is the one that calls a function. So this environment changes according to when we're calling a function, or or when or where we're we're calling uh, a function. And yes, and and not how the function was created. And we can see it by looking at a trace back. And the the example from the the book is also it's also nice. We can we can actually execute it. So we have. F that calls G, G that calls H, and H uh, calls stop. So if we call F with any any value, we're gonna get all the way to H. And if we see the the traceback, we get the the call stack all of the function that 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 were called before uh the one that, that drew the the error and that's that's our caller environment in this case it was like really simple because one one function called another one and and that one called another one and and it was just a function inside a function but it can also get to very complicated uh things because of the lazy evaluation and i'm not gonna get in, into into that uh if, if you want to know more about about that we could you can you can uh, look at this part of the of the of the book but yes it, uh, it will also be a chapter later oh nice nice so. nice <laughs> okay so Finally, uh, we have some other cool features features about uh environments. 
environments avoid copies of large data, they manage the, the state inside a package. And because they add as a as a hash map, uh, they they make the lookups really fast. Uh, that's that's what I do not understand. Yes. But uh, <laughs> I, I believe them. <laughs> Yeah, it's and it's related with what you said about the random, their, their, yeah, the random. Yep. yep, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, if they if they act as a hash map, then then it wouldn't it wouldn't bind. I will need I will need to to work on that uh, to understand it, do the exercise by myself to understand why. <laughs> okay. Also, just to understand what the like. How do you use that? That's what I'm kind of curious. Like, how does that function anyway when you I, call I the function that. it's fast to form the name of the function because of that like i guess what i meant is like an example of where where like that's cool but how what where would you use this i mean all the time when you call the function okay so you do like kind of within within like a workflow yeah. or within a package or something like yeah you, it's 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 added by i mean we don't see it but let's say like uh, at some time like to know like let's say like we could mutate uh it, it's 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 very fast to form whereas mutate his and it's because of that but i do not know why <laughs> <laughs> all right very well, was great presentation so that's all i have no that was good that was really interesting and it was a good discussion halfway through yeah and um yeah feel free to submit your pull requests yes i think it would be a good great improvement uh, does the folks have a question? I actually have a question about um, the schedule because I, I feel like things changed. Is that going to change again? Yeah, yeah, gonna... yeah. So I wanted to sign up for another chapter, but I, I want to know if the date I choose is going to change or not. Currently, I don't think it's going to change, but I have one question. Uh, so we have one week of break after like the end of what I will call like the, the core the core chapters. And then after we jump in functional programming, I didn't see any break on uh, object oriented. Oh yeah. So, um, but I, I I do not think it will change. I I wanted to know like to ask the group uh, if you go like in shared slide maybe. Oh, no. claim a chapters. Yep, and coordinate. Yeah. Um, currently, I don't think it will change. But uh, yeah, let's make a nice, I mean, I don't know, like, are we happy with one week break? Do we need more more than one week break? This is up to discussion, I, I would say. I think before it worked out really poorly for me because I was away during the book club times and I was here during the break time. So this actually works better for me. So okay. uh, like, um, let's, 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 let's manage that. Um, let's, let's keep that new schedule and we'll ask a uh, next session uh when we get more people if that bothers of people yeah it looks like joe's thinks it's better uh to yeah. have it a little bit more compact too so that we can get more done before the the, the school season starts again i agree but let's see let, let, let's re-ask folks and we'll see more sorry so you're gonna you're gonna do a poll in the no no, no 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 like just for now we keep that as it okay, is good. So i'll sign up for for another one yeah then. and next week with award we ask if that bothers of people, mm -hmm. if not, uh, we go we go for it. Awesome. Yep. Um, I guess that's it. Well, any any question? Oh dang, I I forget to type start. Okay, I'm gonna start to tap end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, uh, okay, well. Uh, good job, everyone. It was uh, and especially uh, Diana was great. Um, and bye, everyone. See you next time. Bye. -bye. bye.